Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. Today is November 9th, day after uh, the midterm election, and there's still things, you know, of course, that are going on, still waiting for votes to be to be counted. Um, one quick observation is it would appear by how people are, are choosing to vote that it hasn't gotten bad enough to to shake to shake our brothers and sisters loose from that propaganda machine. It hasn't gotten bad enough yet, but know this, it will because when when bullies are victorious, they don't stop bullying, they start bullying more. When abusers are victorious, they don't stop abusing, they start to abuse more. So, you know, we're in for a, a rough ride. But that's not really what I wanna focus on because there's plenty of people talking about that. What I wanna focus on is something that that I feel is, is even more is even more telling and more of a threat to, basically to the, to the moral fortitude of our souls, to what is right and what is wrong, to the battle between good and evil. I think this encapsulates it a whole lot more. And I just wanna show you a series of things and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm, so I'm gonna show you these things and show you what the reaction is. And then I'm gonna give you, to balance it out, I'm gonna give you some objective truth. Because when when that propaganda machine is running, objective truth tends to not be an asset, so they, they abandon it. And what they do is, is they'll convolute an issue, make it very confusing, or they'll speak very ambiguously, um, or they'll just out and out lie, and they'll misdirect, and they'll distract, and they'll get you, you know, emotionally, um, you know, hyped up so that it's difficult for you to use your prefrontal cortex and, and actually reason and trust. So, Let's start here. Now, these are a series of articles. I think they're all from left-leaning rags, I believe so, but it doesn't really matter in this case because they're all reporting the same way. And so first I wanna point out is the title here, Seismic Win, Michigan Voters Approve Constitutional Amendment to Protect Abortion Rights. And so that's coming from Common Dreams. And then we have uh, Yahoo, Abortion Rights Advocates Count Seismic Victories in Midterm Elections Across US. And then we have uh, Rachel Maddow's uh, blog, the Maddow blog, so we're looking at MSNBC, and we have abortion rights advocates win landslide victory in key statewide races. And then we go over to uh, uh, Ad Free UK News, and once again, we have abortion rights advocates count seismic victories in midterm elections across US. And then finally, we have the abortion uh, rights measures when approval in first major U.S. election since Roe v. Wade was overturned. This is coming from the Center for Reproductive Rights. So uh, uh, you look here, right, and you, and you, you, you see them clapping and, and cheering, right? So this is Michigan. They're going yes on Prop 3. So what I want you guys to understand is that all of these people, all of these people have been absolutely and totally brainwashed. They believe... I don't believe that these are evil people, but they're complicit in evil, and therefore they need to be they need to be addressed as such. But I don't believe that that they're evil to their core. I believe that they've been misled. I believe that this shows how strong messaging is, how strong controlling a narrative is, how strong deception can be, how strong lies can be when they're repeated, how strong words words themselves can be, which is why it's so important that that the left forces, you know, compels speech and pronouns and, 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 and why they use all of these words because they know how important words are to shape uh, the reality of our civilization, whether it aligns with reality or not. And so I just want to show you these things, right? I'll include uh, these links. You can read through them. They, they, all, they all say the same things. Like I'll read a little bit. They all say the same things. Yesterday, millions of people in the U.S. voted in elections that will shape U.S. sexual and reproductive health and rights policy in the wake of the U.S. Supreme Court devastating decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. So that right there is all propaganda, right? Sexual and reproductive health rights, that's not what they're talking about. What they're talking about is killing babies and having the right to murder the most innocent of us. How can that be a reproductive right? 
it, that just it doesn't make any sense, right? A reproductive right would, would be the right to actually reproduce, something that, that they took away from them in China. <laughs> that would actually be a reproductive right. I have the right to reproduce. I have the right to, to the basic, basic needs of our species, right? Food, shelter, safety, and then to reproduce. <laughs> Go forth and be fruitful and multiply, right? So ending that process is not a reproductive right, it's murder. But that's why I say words are very important. And then we go over here, and this article is, is, is obviously very, very similar to this one here, right? Same picture. So you can read through this. It, it reads the same. It's all propaganda. It's all making it seem like, like they've won something, right? And I'm going to show you in a minute what, what they've actually won because I, I, be, these people are being misled. They, they just simply are, right? Because what they're being told, what they're being told is that women's lives are in jeopardy. And so, of course, if you tell me that, that a woman's life is in jeopardy, if you tell me that anybody's life is in jeopardy, a child, a woman, a man, of course, if I'm a good person, I'm gonna go, hey, what, what can we do you know, to not put them in jeopardy? What can we do to, to keep them safe and to save their life? Right, because that's what, that's what a moral, righteous person would do. Someone who believes in truth. That's what they would do. But see, that's not what it is. That's the manipulation. This isn't about the safety of a woman. This is about the safety of children and unborn children, no less. So they don't want to ever have that conversation. When they say my body, my choice, you understand they're not talking about the, the baby's body and the baby's choice. The baby doesn't get to have a body. The baby doesn't get to have a choice. Do you see how evil that is? You're advocating for one life while ending another. And you, and you think that that's the moral high ground. It isn't. But that's the manipulation. It's that, yeah, of course I, I want a woman to have a, you know, the choice over their body. That's why we're against rape. <laughs> that's why we're against rape. That's where your body, your choice ends. Is that you get to say when or if, with whom, where, all that. When it comes to sexual intercourse. Because it's your body, your choice. Just like it's my body, my choice. But if I get a my body, my choice, and you get a by my body, my choice, then the baby gets a my body, my choice, because the baby is a human being. And so you can't get selective, but that's how they sell it to these people. So that's why I don't believe that their intentions are evil, but they're complicit in evil. So their intentions are, are basically canceled out because we have to deal with the results of actions, right? This is not a fairy tale world. In reality, we have to deal with causality, right? So here's the lie. I'm going to show you the lie and then I'm going to show you the truth. And then I'm going to show you what it is that they're actually advocating for and what they're celebrating for, what they, what they believe that they've won. And you tell me if it's evil or not. You tell me how you feel about it. The abortion pill and in-clinic abortion. In-clinic abortions are also called surgical abortions. During an in-clinic abortion, a doctor, nurse, or other healthcare provider empties your uterus using gentle suction and... I want, you, I want you to pay attention to the graphics and the language. Gentle, gentle suction. And, and I want you to pay attention to this graphic that they're using. It looked like a, little, like a little marble. Understand, that's all a part of the propaganda. They can't show you the truth. They can't show you the truth. Okay? Sometimes other medical tools. For most people, an in-clinic abortion feels like strong period cramps, but everyone's experience is different. Yeah, it just feels like strong period cramps. It's going to be nothing, right? It's like going through a drive through and picking up a cheeseburger and some fries. See, this is the propaganda. This is the lie. Remember this. When I show you the truth, remember how they're wording this. This is Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. The plan is to not be a parent. <laughs> Everything they do is backwards, right? Because live backwards is evil. Everything they do is backwards. When they say reproductive rights, it's the right to end reproduction. It's not the right to reproduction. It's the right to end it. When they say planned parenthood, the plan is not to be a parent. They're not helping people be parents at all. The medical staff will help make your abortion as comfortable as possible. You'll get medications to make it hurt less, and you might get medicine to help you relax or sleep through the procedure. Wow, doesn't that sound nice? Medical staff is there to have your back. Make sure that you're comfortable. Make sure that you're not really in pain. Isn't that awesome? You might have a little cramping after your abortion, 
and you'll probably want to take it easy for a few hours. But most people can go back to their normal activities the next day. Wow, isn't that awesome? The next day, you're just, you're right back up on that horse. You're right back up on that bike. Just going about your day, right? Just grabbing some coffee, walking your dog, going grocery shopping. Like it's nothing. Like you didn't just take a human life. No, like you didn't just kill your own flesh and blood. No, this is easy. This is easy. Before your abortion, you'll have an exam and lab tests and possibly an ultrasound. And you'll meet with a nurse, doctor, or other staff to talk about your options and make sure abortion is the right decision for you. Sometimes the decision to have an abortion is simple. Other times, it's more complicated. But either way, it's your decision. Only you know what's right for you. Only you know what's right for your baby. They're not even talking about the baby. Do you see that? They're not even talking about it. They made it a marble. They're acting like this isn't a human life. They're saying this is just about you. It's all you. It's you. You, you. And at the end of the day is you. And the beginning of the day is you. And it's you. You, 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 you. Abortion is very common. And it's also very safe. Look at that. It's common and safe. I thought it was supposed to be rare. I thought that was the whole thing. It's going to be rare. But now it's common? Understand abortion is baby murder. So what she's saying is that, that it's safe to kill your baby and it's common. Hey, it's just what we do. This is how we progressed. This is how we progressed as a, as a civilization. Wow, isn't that great? You can just dip on in, it's gonna feel like some cramping, we'll just suck it right out and then we'll send you about your, about your way, you can go walk your dog. And serious problems are extremely rare. Laws about abortion are different depending on the state you live in. There may be waiting periods or other restrictions before you can get an abortion. And it may be harder to get an appointment for an abortion after the 12th week of pregnancy. So if you're considering abortion, talk to a healthcare provider as soon as you can, so you have as many options as possible. The caring staff at Planned Parenthood are experts at providing safe abortion and supporting you throughout the process. They can answer your questions, give you accurate information about all of your options, and offer non-judgmental support, no matter what you decide to do about your pregnancy. To find out more about your abortion options, call your local Planned Parenthood Health Center. What I'd like you to look up, just for me, just for me, if you care about the truth, go and look up and see if you can find a statistic on how many people who go to Planned Parenthood get talked out of having an abortion. Go check that out. Now, that's the lie. You see how they made that? The music, the woman's voice, how it's all calm, it's all safe, you're gonna get this and that, it's gonna be just a wonderful thing. Again, some minor cramping. There could be some side effects, but you know, severe side effects are very, very rare. This is just gonna be an easy thing for you. You're just gonna slide in, slide on out. There's not gonna be any emotional trauma associated with murdering. This, that, that doesn't happen at all. What, and, and this just don't even worry about it. So that's the lie, that's the lie, that these people are happy that they won in Michigan, and I think um, Kentucky was another one, I believe. I believe it was Kentucky. This, all these people, they're happy, all these women. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> so here's the truth. First, I'm going to describe a first trimester medical abortion. This is a procedure in which the mother swallows pills in order to terminate her baby, and it is performed up to the ninth week of pregnancy. The procedure involves two steps. Step one, at the abortion clinic or doctor's office, the woman takes pills which contain mifepristone, also called RU46. RU46 blocks the action of a hormone called progesterone. Progesterone is naturally produced in the mother's body to stabilize the lining of the uterus. When RU46 blocks progesterone, the lining of the mother's uterus breaks down, cutting off blood and nourishment to the baby, who then dies inside the mother's womb. It is important to note that even after it has been taken, it is possible to reverse the effects of RU46 and save the baby if progesterone is administered. The sooner, the better. Step two. 24 to 48 hours after taking RU46, the woman takes misoprostol, also called Cytotec, that is administered either orally or vaginally. RU46 and misoprostol together cause severe cramping, contractions, and often heavy bleeding to force the dead baby out of the woman's uterus. The process can be very intense and painful, and the bleeding and contractions can last from a few hours to several days. 
While she could lose her baby anytime and anywhere during this process, the woman will often sit on a toilet as she prepares to expel the child, which she will then flush. She may even see her dead baby within the pregnancy sac. At nine weeks, for example, the baby will be almost an inch long, and if she looks carefully, she might be able to count the fingers and toes. At seven weeks, it has a 5% failure rate. At eight weeks, an 8% failure rate. And at nine weeks, a 10% failure rate. If failure occurs, she will usually be offered a surgical abortion. For the mother, Medical abortion often causes abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, and heavy bleeding. Maternal deaths have occurred, most frequently due to infection and undiagnosed ectopic pregnancy. So, just real quick, that looks a little bit different than what Planned Parenthood was saying, correct? Let's continue. First trimester surgical abortion called suction DNC, dilatation and curatage. This is the most frequently performed abortion and is used typically from 5 to 13 weeks of pregnancy. Now, I want you, did you just hear that? This is, this is what's used the most between 5 and 13 weeks. This is the most typical abortion procedure. After administering anesthesia, the abortionist uses a speculum like this. This is placed inside the vagina and opened using this screw on the side allowing the abortionist to see the cervix, the entrance to the uterus. The cervix acts as a gate that stays closed for the duration of pregnancy, protecting the baby until it is ready for birth. The abortionist uses a series of metal rods called dilators, like these, which increase in thickness, and inserts them into the cervix to dilate it, gaining access to the inside of the uterus where the baby resides. The baby has a heartbeat, fingers, toes, arms, and legs, but its bones are still weak and fragile. The abortionist takes a suction catheter like this one. This is a 14 French suction catheter. It's clear plastic, about 9 inches long, and it has a hole through the center. It is inserted through the cervix into the uterus. The suction machine is then turned on with a force 10 to 20 times more powerful than your household vacuum cleaner. The baby is rapidly torn apart by the force of the suction and squeeze through this tubing down into the suction machine, followed by the placenta. Though the uterus is mostly emptied at this point, one of the risks of a suction DNC is incomplete abortion. Essentially, pieces of the baby or placenta left behind. This can lead to infection or bleeding. In an attempt to prevent this, the abortionist uses a curette to scrape a lining of the uterus. The curette is basically a long-handled curved blade. Once the uterus is empty, the speculum is removed and the abortion is complete. The risks of suction DNC include perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix, potentially damaging intestine, bladder, and nearby blood vessels, hemorrhage, infection, and in rare instances, even death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. Second. So once again, this is the truth. And... I want you to understand that this is, this is what these women are celebrating. They're celebrating the ability to be able to do this. That's what they're celebrating. They're not talking about medical necessity. They're not talking about rape and incest. That's not what they're talking about. Because those happen statistically so infrequent that it's, it's a non-argument. This is what's typically happening and it's due to convenience. You can say, oh, it's economic, it's all convenience. These are people who consented to sex, whose primary job is to produce offspring, and then when it actually does what it's intended to do, then they want to go and engage in, in, in further their, their, their selfishness, further their narcissism, further just them out for themselves just to self-gratify. They want to they wanna, they wanna compound on that by then destroying their own flesh and blood in the most heinous way possible trimester surgical abortion called dilatation and evacuation or DNE. A DNE is performed between 13 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. After administering anesthesia, the abortion. Oh, and then real quick, you know, another thing that the left, you know, does as they, as they use words is shame is one of them. Oh, you shouldn't shame this person and shame this person. But understand that shame does have its place, just like judgment has its place in our society. Just like discrimination does have its place in our society. So does inclusion, 
right? All of it has its place. Well, I would say to you that you should be ashamed of yourself if, if you are murdering your own offspring out of convenience. Now, granted, if you're looking at rape and incest, those are extenuating circumstances. But if you chose to engage in sexual activity and then you got pregnant and then you chose to get this procedure, you should be ashamed of yourself. And so should the man. If, he, if he's aware of it, he should be ashamed of himself as well because he's just as complicit. Abortionist uses a weighted speculum like this one that opens the vagina widely. Because second trimester babies are so large, this greater access facilitates a late term abortion. Late-term abortion requires that the cervix be prepared 24 to 48 hours in advance with laminaria. Laminaria is a type of sterilized seaweed that absorbs water over 8 to 12 hours and swells to several times its original diameter. Once removed, metal dilators can be used to further open the cervix as needed. Once the cervix has been stretched open, the suction tube is placed inside. A baby at 20 weeks gestation is as big as the length of my hand from head to rump, not counting the legs. The suction machine is turned on and pale yellow amniotic fluid surrounding the baby is suctioned out through the catheters. With babies this big, they don't fit through catheters this size. The baby's bones and skull are too strong to be torn apart by suction alone. This is a sofa clamp. A sofa clamp is made of stainless steel. It's about 13 inches long. The business end is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide, and there are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. One by one, the rest of the limbs are removed, along with the intestines, the spine, and the heart and lungs. Usually the most difficult part of the procedure is extracting the baby's head, which is about the size of a large plum at 20 weeks. The head is grasped and crushed. The abortionist knows he has crushed the skull when a white substance comes out of the cervix. This was the baby's brains. The abortionist then removes skull pieces. He removes the placenta and any leftover parts of the baby with a curette. So this brings to mind I'm here in California, and we're looking at uh, Proposition 1, which looks like it's going to be passed, where Newsom, the evil, evil man that he is, is trying to codify abortion into our California Constitution. Up to nine months. So when you're talking about this late term, this is, this is what he's advocating for with a smile. This is what he's saying he's going to do for women. This right here. Keep that in mind. It's up to, and then even in some cases, past nine months, right? This shit make you sick. It turns my stomach. Every time I see it, it turns my stomach. Every time. Because I have a soul. <laughs> so if you're, if you're out there, I, I have to believe that these women who are celebrating, they haven't seen this. They don't know that this is what it entails. They can't, because I don't believe that these people are evil. I believe that they're being duped. I believe that, that they're useful idiots being used by a minority of evil people to just, there's a number of reasons from eugenics on, there's a number of reasons why someone would want to, to do this to the human population. But it's just evil. It's just evil. Scraping the lining of the uterus for any remaining tissue. The abortionist then collects the baby parts and reassembles them to make sure that there are two arms, two legs, and all the pieces. Once all the parts have been accounted for, the abortion is complete. For the woman, this procedure carries a significant risk of major complications, including perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix with possible damage to the bowel, bladder, and other maternal organs. Infection and hemorrhage can also occur, which can even lead to death. Future pregnancies are also at greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. Finally, I'm going to describe a third trimester induced abortion which is performed at 25 weeks to term. So one last thing, when you're watching this one here, I want you to keep in mind that whether you agree or not, truth is the truth. It doesn't need you to agree with it. Life starts at conception. And at conception, that is 
a human life. That's a human being just in the early stages. In our early stages, we don't have arms and legs yet because they need to be developed. So I want you to understand through all of this, this is a unique human being. Every single time that this procedure is done, it kills a unique human being that we're never going to see ever again. At this point, the baby is almost fully developed and viable, meaning he or she could survive outside the womb if the mother were to go into labor prematurely. Because the baby is so large and developed, this procedure takes three or four days to complete. On day one, the abortionist uses a large needle to inject a drug called digoxin. Digoxin is generally used to treat heart problems, but a high enough dosage of digoxin will cause fatal cardiac arrest. The abortionist inserts the needle with the digoxin through the women's abdomen or through her vagina and into the baby, targeting either the head, torso, or heart. The baby will feel it. Babies at this stage feel pain. When the needle pierces the baby's body and the digoxin takes effect, the life of the baby will end. Just real quick. Even the baby feeling pain or not feeling pain does not detract from the grotesqueness of this, of these procedures. Okay, so yes, it does make it worse thinking that the baby can feel all this happen. But even prior to that, it's still just as bad to me. And then what I want you guys to keep in mind is that I'm sure that there are cases, there are circumstances where it may be necessary. It may be like 0.1% where it really is necessary, right? Ectopic pregnancy, you know, like it really is necessary. But with medical necessity, it's going to go through a medical evaluation from professionals who are going to try everything they can until they get down to that as a last resort. So once again, I'm not talking about that. I'm addressing the over 97%. Some people even say 99%, but let's... let's Let's be a little bit less liberal with it. And let's say that it's 97%. 97% are due to convenience. 97% are due to people being irresponsible. And this is the result. And that's why I want you guys to keep in mind that these are human beings, whether they feel pain or not, whether they have arms and legs or toes or not, whether their brain is developed or not, doesn't matter because if given enough time, they would have gotten all of those things. That's why it's early development. The abortionist then inserts multiple sticks of seaweed called laminaria into the woman's cervix. They will slowly open up the cervix for delivery of a stillborn baby. While the woman waits for the laminaria to dilate her cervix, she carries her dead baby inside of her for two to three days. On day two, the abortionist replaces the laminaria and may perform a second ultrasound to ensure the baby is dead. You know what? I bet... Carrying around your lifeless child in your belly probably has no psychological effects at all, right? Right? But I bet they're just completely fine. They just, after they recover, they're just walking their dog again, going shopping. If the child is still alive, he administers another lethal dose of digoxin. The woman then goes back to where she is staying while her cervix continues to dilate. If she goes into labor and is unable to make it to the clinic in time, she will give birth at home or in a hotel. In this case, she may be advised to deliver her baby into a bathroom toilet. The abortionist then comes to remove the baby and clean up. If she can make it to the clinic, she will do so during her severest contractions and deliver her dead son or daughter. If the baby does not come out whole, then the procedure becomes a DNE, a dilation and evacuation. And the abortionist uses clamps and forceps to dismember the baby piece by piece. Once the placenta and all the body parts have been removed, the abortion is complete. Late term abortions have a high risk of hemorrhage, lacerations and uterine perforations, as well as a risk of maternal death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. So that's the truth. That right there. As I said, it makes me sick to my stomach. Every single time I watch that, it makes me sick to my stomach. And I know that if these women who are cheering, who believe that they've won a victory, if they, if they saw this, it would turn their stomachs too. And I believe, I believe, I know, I know that it will touch their hearts and it will start to change their mind. 
And the fact that Planned Parenthood, that's not in their advertisement. They're not showing what happens in each one of these scenarios. It shows you where, where their motivations are. Because they know that if women, if, if, if men and women were to actually watch this, because most people are, are good, most people are, if they actually watch this, it would change, it, it would completely change the whole abortion narrative. And people will start to understand that it's never been about pro-choice and pro-life. It's always been about pro-life and pro-death.